Hello, and welcome to an attempt to implement zero overhead declarative state machine with fast compilation times in five minutes. So probably everyone knows the state machines. It's uh, that's UML diagram for it, but we won't dig into that. We'll try to implement it with C++. So that's SML syntax, where we have the definition of UML uh, described in the text, uh, C++. It's kind of uh, clear what is happening. It's compliant with the UML 2.5. I'm not going to explain it. We'll just implement it with TMP, because that's interesting. So implementation, I uh, will be using this library. Uh, so the idea is behind that. Uh, it starts from the transition. Transition will have the fixed string as a source state, event, guard, action, and destination state. And then we'll expose those guys. And the DSL will be just uh, our operators, because that's what we do. And we overload all of them. And the call operator will just verify that the guard is satisfied. If it is, we call the action. Otherwise, we, we do nothing. So that's the front end. Uh, how that will uh, apply to the, our transition table. We have transition table. We get the transitions out of that with the list. So that's something that you'll be operating on in the backend. So the backend is more interesting. So we have the current state, which will be just an int, depending on how many states we have. And we'll try to implement the event states and mapping with the uh, TMP in order to get that working. And then the process event will be the function, which we'll just call at the end of the current event. So the event, uh, so as I pointed out, we'll be using ranges at compile time to, to get it uh, working. So we have these transitions, which was the list of the transitions. When we pipe it to transform, we get the T, and we get the, the event. And unique will be just std sort and uh, std unique uh, under the hood. So as simple as that. And we get the list of connect, establish, ping, timeout and disconnected out of there. What about the states? States are a bit more difficult. We have transitions. We get all of them. We get the source states, destination states, to, co to combine them together. We filter using the fixed string here, notice, which is kind of difficult uh, in MP11, for example. But we can use it here. We verify the ones which are not empty. We, we remove them because that's the states which we uh, don't use like not all transitions have the state, and we pass the unique uh, as well. So notice all of that is based on the std ranges as well. So that will give us a list of states with the fixed ones. So then we try to implement uh, the the mapping. The mapping will be inherited of the pairs per event per the list of uh, state, and because we have a lot of states, which will be a runtime thing to the transition, uh, and there's a lot of transition per state. I have to go faster. So we have events. We pipe it to transform. We get the pair. So we have the event. And then we get the states. We transform them again, get the, all the transitions. We filter the ones which pass, uh, which match the source state and the event. And this here we use type ID, which is kind of handy here. And then we pipe it to all the transitions per state. We pipe to the lambda, which will call all the transitions per given state. And at the end, we pipe it to inherit so that we can get the, the mapping which we wanted. So then the last thing is the process event. We get the uh, mapping. And here, we'll use the immediately invoked lambda expression to get the pair of the one of the pair of the inherited event, which match, match in the event which, which is passed to the process event. We get the list of transitions. I do a bit of magic. Uh, so in that case, we, we'll create a jump table out of all the uh, transitions per state, because that will be at runtime. Uh, and then uh, we'll go through all of them, find the one for the given state, for the given event. We call the transition, uh, we call the uh, uh, transition on the if static cast. And then we just change the state if that has been satisfied. And how we call it, we just call the dispatch table on the current state of the event and TS. And after that, we get really nice performance. So uh, all calls uh, will be, uh, we can call it at compile time because it's cons expert. So there is all manipulation is compile time available. But this one is at runtime, and that will give us really uh, zero overhead abstraction code. So with that, thank you.
and peace and grace.